We're going to listen to uh, a little bit from my new release today called Lost City. Check it. Lost City. Amen. So that's my new track that I'm dropping today. That's part of it called Lost City. Um, it is available on YouTube right now as a lyric video and it'll be available later on uh, iTunes and Spotify and all that. But you can go to my YouTube channel, A Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross or PDT SOTC. That's how to find my music online, hashtag PDT SOTC. And you can check that track out. Again, it's called Lost City. Uh, time for today's prophetic word, so let's say a prayer and we'll jump right on in. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, O oh God, that we are not lost, but we are found in you. Thank you, O oh God, that you hear from heaven and answer prayer. Thank you, Father, for the favor in Jesus Christ, and we give all the glory to him, because it's only because of him and his blood and his sacrifice and his name that we can even approach you, most high and heavenly Father. We only called you, Father, because of Jesus, because the Lord made it possible. So we give you all the glory. We can't thank you enough, God. If I had a thousand tongues, it wouldn't be enough to thank you and give you the glory Do your name. Now I ask you to breathe through me, O oh God. Uh, forgive me for any sin. Wash me clean. Uh, speak through my mouth, my brain, my tongue, my, my teeth, my lips, uh, my heart, O oh God, and let what you want come forward in this broadcast so that you might get the glory in all things and so that your people might hear you uh, and hear what it is you have to say. We thank you for it and we believe you for it and we call it done and blessed. In Jesus' name we declare and decree it. Amen. All right. Amen and amen. So, today's prophetic word is clean energy. Today's prophetic word is clean energy. Now, I know you're going to ask me, what exactly do you mean by that? I'm going to explain it, Okay. Let's look at our scripture reference. Our scripture reference is going to be Acts chapter 1, verse 8. That's the book of Acts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Acts. That means it's the fifth book in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then the Acts. Okay, fifth book in the New Testament. The book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. The book of Acts have to do with what happens after Jesus left. Because the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John pretty much show the life of Christ all the way up through his crucifixion, his resurrection. Forty days after he rose from the dead, he stayed on earth <clears throat> ministering to his people, and then he ascended back up into heaven. And that's pretty much where the Gospels end. So the book of Acts is about what happens after that. After Jesus leaves, what do the people that followed him, what did they do? That's what the book of Acts is about. So that's what we're reading from today, Acts chapter 8. Excuse me, excuse me, Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Um, and here we go, I'm reading out of the King James Version. Also, did I say welcome? Welcome to everybody listening to me on the podcast. Welcome to everybody watching on YouTube. Welcome to my Facebook Live people and welcome to my Periscope folks. Okay, all right. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, King James Version. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Wow. Again, but well, let me read uh, the Berean Study Bible. 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Again, wow, what a thing for the Lord to say. So again, <clears throat> our prophetic word today is clean energy. So what does that have to do with what we just read? <clears throat> We're going to look at the first part, but you will receive power, okay? The word power there in the Greek, well, let's look at the phrase you will receive. You will receive coming out of the Greek means to receive, to get, to take, I take, or lay hold of. What does that mean? That means you have to participate. So let me right off the bat, once again, you know, I'm all about breaking up the genie concept of God. People for far too long, both unbelievers and believers, both Christians and non-Christians, have believed for far too long that everything's up to God, that God is just going to wave his mighty hand, that God is going to do everything, and you don't have to do anything. But part of the translation of that phrase, you will receive, means I receive, I get, but also I take, I lay hold of. What does that mean? What I tell you all the time, it means you have to HBO. In other words, when God tells you he's going to give you power, you've got to expect it, you've got to say it, you've got to believe it, and you've got to walk in it. You have to participate, okay? It's not just God does everything and you don't do anything, okay? The kingdom of God does not work that way. That's not who God is, and that's not how his kingdom is set up. But it says you will receive power. Now, that word coming out of the Greek, power, in Acts 1.8, is a dynamin, which means from dunamai, duname, excuse me, from duname, it means force, especially miraculous power. So that word there is dynamin, it means force, especially miraculous power. So what does that mean? That means that God is going to give you uh, like the force, the power, the energy to do stuff, especially miraculous power. Now, I say this all the time. If the Lord can't do any more for you than you could do for yourself, why are we serving him? So God here is telling you that he's going to give you power, especially miraculous power. In other words, you don't have to live naturally. You don't have to live as a natural person. You don't have to live as a natural man. You can live supernaturally. Now, that doesn't mean... You still don't have to do the things in the natural that you need to do. It means that God's going to add some super to your natural and give you access to this new dimension of power. So to be practical, for example, you still got to pour the milk on your cereal. The Holy Ghost is not going to do that. You still have to pick up a toothbrush and brush your teeth. Holy Ghost is not going to do that. I wish I could find it knowing to brush your teeth. Wouldn't that be cool? We just sit up in front of the mirror and the Holy Ghost doing that. That's not going to happen. That's not what that means. So... Some people, they read the word and they just go crazy. They just go all off the deep end. That's not what it's talking about. You still have to do, obviously, your natural things. But it's saying God is going to give you his miraculous power. He's going to add some super to your natural and, and invite you and empower you and enable you to walk in a dimension that is not possible to walk in by human effort. Uh-oh, uh I've been crying in church. That's, uh, that's what that was. Um, walk in a dimension that you cannot achieve on your own, walk in a dimension where God's power is actually moving and breathing and, and flowing through you to do miraculous things. Now, what constitutes a miracle? Well, normally, a miracle is something that either speeds up a natural process or supersedes a natural process. Okay, I'll say that again. Normally, a miracle is something that speeds up a natural process or supersedes or overrides a natural process. I was just listening to someone the other day talk about how they were able to get a building because God told them they could get this building and they didn't have the money when they started. And they didn't even have the relationship with the bank that they needed when they started. But because they walked in faith and they believed, by the time it was all said and done, they got the property, they got the mortgage, they got the keys, they got all that because they believed. See, that's a miracle. That supersedes or speeds up a natural process. In other words, where in the natural, it might take you years to build a relationship with a banker. This particular person's testimony was they met this person and they said, I really like you. I believe in what you're doing. And he got favor with the banker he just met. That speeds up a natural process. That's a miracle. 
Some people have been able to get things in spite of very bad credit. That overrides the natural process, but that doesn't mean you don't need to fix your credit. You do need to fix your credit, okay? But sometimes, if the Lord says so, sometimes you can get things uh, and, and it's overriding a natural process. Just like when you get healed. Just because God heals you does not then mean you can do foolish things or eat a bad diet. You still need to eat a good diet and exercise. You see what I mean? So it's not the elimination of natural processes, but normally, again, a miracle is either the speeding up of a natural process or the superseding of a natural process. But remember, when the Lord did stuff like that, he would always, when he forgave and he healed, he would always say, go thy way and sin no more. So in other words, don't keep continuing in the bad habits. Okay, so why is that so important? Well, today's prophetic word is clean energy. God is telling us he does not want us to depend on the flesh. He wants us to depend on the Holy Ghost. Now, that is a whole new way of living. And that way of living is supposed to be the norm for the Christian. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Coming out of the Greek, that word holy means set apart by or for God, holy, sacred, holy or sacred. Spirit is uh, wind, spirit, or breath, uh, pneumatos. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, that says, uh, that word comes means to supervene, to arrive, occur, impend, attack, or influence. Okay? Uh, and so what it's saying is that the Spirit of God is going to arrive, he's going to intervene, he's going to attack uh, all those problems for you. So you've got the third person of the Trinity actually living on the inside of you. And he's the one that supplies the dynamite, the, the, the force, the miracles to allow you to walk in them. But as I said at the top, you have to participate. And that's where people, don't you remember later on in this very book, when that man was laid at the gate of the temple called Beautiful, if you're not familiar with that story, and that man was crippled, and Peter said, silver and gold have we none, but in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And then Peter grabbed him and pulled him up to his feet. And then the Bible says immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Everybody participated in that miracle. Peter participated, John participated, and the man participated. See what I mean? They didn't just sit there. They had to participate. Peter had to tap into that power and use that power by his faith. Okay? So, again, what the Spirit of God wanted me to deliver today was that it is clean energy. Because there's such a toll that's taken on us when we turn to fleshly things for comfort or sustenance or energy. Like uh, if you turn to liquor, if you turn to cursing, if you just start cussing and all this profanity comes out of your mouth, if you turn to porn, Okay, and you just give yourself to porn. If you turn to adultery, a bad relationships, having relationships with married people, or cheating on your spouse. If you uh, turn to a bad diet, bad exercise. If you turn to cigarettes, if you turn to weed, if you turn to uh, racism or racial hatred, if you turn to unforgiveness. If you say somebody hurt me, and if it's the last thing I do, I'm never going to forgive them. I'll hate them for the rest of my life. Well, any of those tools that you turn to, turn to, that that are of the flesh are dirty, they corrupt you, they hurt your mind, they hurt your emotions, they hurt your character, they hurt your integrity, and they hurt your body, depending on what they are. You know, if it's something that directly affects the body, like alcohol, that comes from the outside in and affects your body, and then there's a demon associated with alcohol, there's that too. If it's something like unforgiveness, that comes from the inside out, where that's a posture of your heart, where you have said, that because this person hurt me and because this person did me wrong, I'm never going to forgive them. I'm going to hold this in against them for the rest of my life. That is the flesh. Unforgiveness is of the flesh. And so, whatever other places, because, you know, if, you, if you're using wrath, envy, and jealousy, those can be sources of energy, but there's a high cost when you're running on anger. Anger makes your, your, your heart beat too fast. Anger drives your blood pressure up. Anger wears your body out too fast. There's a cost if you're driving off of unforgiveness, like I just explained. Because when you're walking in unforgiveness, that's like drinking poison, waiting for somebody else to die. Okay? That unforgiveness is poisoning and burning you up. 
but you think that's hurting them. That's not hurting them because you want to forgive them. That's hurting you. See what I mean? All those are examples of dirty energy, of energy that is not helping you. So God says, I want you to operate by my power. I just had a conversation with my cousin uh, two days ago, and she was talking about a flight she was taking. She said when she got up that morning, she had everything all planned out, and none of what she wanted happened. So she just leaned back and said, okay, Lord, you're in control. Okay, Lord, whatever you want. Okay, Lord, not my will, but I'll be done. But thine be done. And the Lord orchestrated it and got her on a different plane, but that plane was smooth sailing, no bumps, no rides. Everything was cool. Uh, she got to where she wanted to go just a little bit late. And she let go and let God, let the Holy Spirit guide her. And the Holy Spirit was guiding her away from her original plan into what he could do for the day. Okay? And she landed fine and every, it was all good in the hood. So what I'm saying is that God is saying that when you are depending on yourself, what does that produce? Well, that produces frustration, does it not? That produces worry. Isn't that the number one mark of self-dependence is worry? Because we're looking at whatever it is we're facing and we're asking ourselves, do I have the resources? Do I have the energy? Do I have the time? Do I have the money? Do I have the networking? Do I have what I need to overcome this obstacle, to defeat this giant? But we just read in the Word that the Holy Spirit wants to give us the dynamite. The miraculous power. He wants to intervene and attack our problems for us. And when we start talking about that, now we're getting into what he can do. Now we're getting into God's power, not your power. You understand? We're getting into God's power and not your power. And that being the case, then the Lord wants us to begin to depend on that clean energy. Just like a lot of people depend on witchcraft, a lot of people depend on incantations, a lot of people depend on voodoo, a lot of people depend on spells, a lot of people depend on the occult stuff. And if you fool around with the occult stuff, it's going to be a high cost. It's going to cost your soul, going to cost your body, going to cost your health. It's going to be a high cost and it's going to draw the judgment of God. So that's another thing that the Lord does not want us to depend on as Christians. We do not have to turn to the occult. We do not have to turn to anything that the devil has to say. We can turn to our power source, the Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity, come down from heaven to indwell New Testament believers to give us the dynamite, the force, the miraculous power to accomplish things that we couldn't do on our own and to accomplish the will of God. This morning in church... Um, we were singing about prosperity and blessing, and then one of the prophets got up, and she said this. She said, oh, my people, uh, I'm indeed opening the door to give you prosperity, to give you wealth. But then she said, what you going to do with it? She said, what you going to do with it when I give it to you? Because I want that wealth to be used to build my kingdom. So God, is, remember I told you, you have to participate. When God opens his hand to you, you still have to do something. So God was challenging people that have been praying about prosperity. God says, I grant you prosperity. I will open financial doors for you. But what you going to do with the money when you get your hands on it? You see that? And so the Spirit of God will supply the power to do the will of God. If we're willing to take our finances and build God's kingdom, then that will draw God's blessing and that God's power will flow to make that happen. But if you are drawing on dirty energy, if you're drawing on dirty power, and you're just drawing on lust, like... All you want to do is take your money and buy everything you see. That's lust of the eyes. If you want to sleep with everybody you see or eat all the food you see, that's an example of lust of the flesh. And if you don't want to pray over your money and don't want to ask God's guidance, that's an, uh, an example of the pride of life. Telling God that you don't need him or want him in your finances. That's just pride. So the flesh was born from lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, in the pride of life, in the Garden of Eden, when the devil was tempting Eve. That's what we mean by the flesh. It's that nature that's against God. It's that thing that makes you want to do wrong. It's that thing that, that always wants to pull you in the direction of wrong and pull your life down. That is the flesh nature, that is, or the carnal nature, and the carnal is opposed to the spiritual. The carnal is thinking through your own mind, with no connection or surrender or submission to God. 
going by your own impulses, no discipline, okay, no ability to tell yourself no, nothing like that. All that is fleshly, and God is saying he no longer, if as Christians we are operating that way, God is saying he no longer wants us to operate that, operate that way with dirty energy, but rather he wants us to operate with clean energy through the Holy Spirit. Let's look at the rest of that verse. But you, Acts 1.8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. My, my, my. I briefly just have time to touch on what all that means. When the Lord says you will be my witness, the Lord never said you would give a witness. The Lord said you would be a witness. So many times people are concerned with what they're saying or sounding like a Christian. But the Lord said, you will be my witnesses. You're going to be a witness. Your life is a witness. See, your witness is not just your testimony. It's not just you saying what God has done for you. It's the way you live. It's, once again, when the power, in the context of the verse, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. That means the Lord expects, expects us to become empowered by the Holy Spirit, and then we become a witness. So it will be the power of the Holy Ghost of God flowing through your wife, that life, flowing through your wife, where you want a Holy Ghost for your wife too, flowing through your, your life that gives a testimony, gives a witness to the people around you. It's Him. That's the reason I'm saved today, because I saw the Spirit of God moving in and upon my grandmother. I saw, uh, me and my cousin were just talking about that, uh, this weekend, when I saw the way my grandmother lived her life as a holy woman of God, and as she went on missionary trips, and she taught us how to read the scripture and pray. We were just shouting about that this weekend. Okay? And that's under the age of 10. Because her life was a witness. Because there was the Holy Spirit on her. And that's how I knew God was real. Because I felt him through her. That's why I love my grandmother so to this day. Okay? So the Lord didn't say we was going to give a witness. The Lord said we was going to be a witness. Then it says in Jerusalem. That means home. Now to the Hebrew people, Jerusalem is their city, so, but the analogy or the principle is home. So you're going to be a witness at home, but then it says in all Judea. Judea was a Roman province. So what the Lord was saying is that you're going to give a witness sometimes to people that have oppressed you. And as African Americans, we can relate to that. You're going to give a witness sometimes to people that have enslaved you, that have oppressed you, the people that have tried to, to control or squash your culture. Okay, because that's what the Romans did to the Hebrews. He said, you're going to give a, be a witness in Judea to even people that have persecuted you. Then he says, you're going to be a witness in Samaria. If you know anything about the Samaritans and the Jews, to help you understand their relationship, the Samaritans were related to the Hebrews. They were an offshoot of the Hebrews, but they were like them embarrassing cousins that nobody likes to talk about. Okay, there was like that side of the family that we like to pretend ain't there. And, you know, when they come to family unions, you know, we ain't too sure about them. They're kind of shady. They're kind of a whole bunch of things. That's what the Samaritans were to the Hebrews. The Lord said you're going to be a witness to them. You're going to be a witness to people that you normally wouldn't even want to be bothered with, that in your natural state you don't even want to acknowledge is there. The Lord said the Holy Ghost is going to cause you to be a witness to them. And then he said, and to the ends of the earth. That word earth there is translated... Uh, I believe that's guess. Uh, it means soil by extension of region or the solid part or the whole of the terrene globe. In other words, the whole planet. Every place you can walk, every place you can place your feet on solid ground, you're going to be a witness. Look at that. So that's what God is trying to empower us to do is to be a witness. And God wants us to use the clean energy of the Holy Ghost to do it and stop depending on fleshly anything. Amen and amen. That's a good word. Okay? Praise God for it. Now, when you see me, I close my eyes. I'm going to speak in tongues and ask the Holy Ghost if there's any more prophetic words, financial words, deliverance, or physical healing that needs to come forth. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen so I can pray for your prayer request. All right? All 
right, all right. So, amen and amen. So, I, I didn't really get anything. So, we're going to uh, I'll leave that right there. Now, I want you to know <clears throat> several things. Uh, no More Genies is coming out this Thursday at uh, 7 o'clock. That's where I talk about uh, my No More Genie series where we're breaking the genie concept of God. My Daily Prophetic Devotional is out, and, and people are really loving this. People are really being blessed by this. Uh, people are, are uh, telling me uh, uh, the feedback that they're getting. And so you can get this online. You can go to my website, prophetdavidtaylor.org, and click on the link and get this. Uh, I'm really super excited about that. And uh, as I told you, um, I'm releasing a new track today. So I'm going to play that track at the end of everything so you can hear the music that's being released today. And you can go to Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross on YouTube and listen to my track. You can look me up, hashtag PDTSOTC. And then there'll be links on the Facebook Live and on Twitter uh, and on my website as well. All right? So amen, amen. God bless you. Remember to use the clean energy of the Holy Ghost. Okay, here's a prophetic word I need to release. Hold on. For behold, my people, it is time for you to depend on me totally. It is the time for you to learn that I am the God of every area of your life and that I love you in every area, that everything about you is known unto me and I want to empower you. I want to enable you. I want to establish you and I want to strengthen you as you learn how to depend on the power of my spirit and not your own mind and not your own flesh. This is a new season. You are in a new place, and I want you to conquer giants, take ground. I want you to do things you've never done before, and you will do so as you learn how to depend on my spirit within you, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. All right, well, I'm excited about that. I was excited about that. More Holy Ghost. Less me, more him is a good day. All right, so, uh, yeah, so No More Genius is Thursday. Prophetic devotional available. New music out. And so you can go watch the lyric video on my YouTube channel. So we're going to play that as we exit. So thank you so much, those of you that are watching me live, those of you that are watching the replay, uh, those of you that want to sow into my ministry, my Zell is, uh, excuse me, prophetdavidtaylor at gmail.com. You can always watch my videos. Watching my videos and subscribing to my channel helps me greatly because you need a certain number of subscribers and video watches to be monetized on YouTube. Also, you can support me on Patreon. My Patreon is Shades of the Cross, patreon.com slash Shades of the Cross, and you will see everything I'm doing there with my music ministry. Okay? Amen, and God bless you. We're going to cue this track up. The name of this track is Lost City. Okay? The name of this track is Lost City, and it's a track about backsliding, if you didn't know that. Okay? So, amen. God bless you. Thank you again so much for listening, and I will see you on Thursday and on Sunday. And remember, time to depend on the clean energy of the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen. So don't forget to check that out. Amen. God bless you. See you on Thursday and Sunday.